Hi, so I have a little bit of a different kind of video for you today. Today's video is going to focus totally on upcycling old clothes that I don't wear anymore, that have just been shoved to the back of my closet, some items I've had for a long time, other items I've recently thrifted that were just kind of lacking something that was making me not reach for them as much. So I wanted to liven up some old pieces and I attempted dyeing some clothing, got some sewing projects, some painting projects, so a good variety of things and I'm pretty pleased with the results. If you watched the vlog I posted in January, I started to work on some of this stuff a little bit, just tackling the mountain of projects I've been pushing off and procrastinating, and so I'm like slowly but surely chipping away at that. So I'm very relieved to get some more of that work done, and of course very excited to share the results with you all. So I don't really think there's anything else for me to talk about, uh, no point in rambling on. Let's just get right into the projects. So for my first project, I wanted to start out with something that was simple and manageable, and I thought the roses would be a perfect place to start. The shape of each garment kind of decided already where I was going to place the roses so I just went where everything was pointed and angled on each piece and I think it fit perfectly there. My design was straightforward but I would definitely recommend mapping it out first. I got these roses from Walmart, I think they were about five dollars, and then I just began to hand sew each flower on. I threaded my needle and started from the inside of the shirt and worked my way outward to the outside of the shirt. I used red thread to match the color of the rose and I just kept weaving in and out like I described before and kind of made an X pattern on the inside of the shirt until the rose was nice and secure. Ultimately, this was a very cheap, very easy DIY that anyone can do, but we are moving on to more difficult projects as I attempt to dye a whole bunch of clothing, one round of black dye and one round of green, and yes, we do have some good results, but we certainly have some bad ones too, and let's just get into it. So since we have those two tops sewn and everything else is colored, I thought we would go through each piece, go through the results, and talk about the process a little bit. We definitely have some fails. <laughs> Uh, but we also have some really good results. That's like all you can hope for, right? I think I'm satisfied for the time being. There's definitely pieces I'm gonna have to take a look at and figure out what I can do. But for now, let's start with a few of the successful pieces. So I already showed you, but this was such an easy DIY and I have minimal sewing skills. I hand sew everything. I don't have a sewing machine. I'm kind of terrified of them, to be honest with you. Yeah, my work, you know, is messy. <laughs> But it's on the inside of the shirt, so you can't tell. I think it's going to hold up just fine. I kind of, you know, was tugging at it a little bit just to see how stable it was on there. And I think I got them mostly secure. But just that little tiny embellishment takes this top to such a new direction. Like that sweet little detail is just really eye-catching, I think. And originally when I bought this top, it had like a flower kind of pinned in the middle. But it was definitely a DIY and... They tried and I liked the attempt, but the way that it was um, constructed was crooked. Me being, you know, insane and neurotic, <laughs> I, I couldn't stand for that. So I had to take it off, but I felt like this shirt was just kind of empty in that place ever since. So this was a perfect little solution. And now this top is so versatile. And this piece might be from the 90s based off the tag or at least like early 2000s or something. This silhouette to me doesn't look too contemporary, but that little rose looks perfectly placed. And a lot of pieces from the 90s used to have those little roses on them. So I thought this turned out so well. Like I said, I have extremely minimal sewing skills. I really do think anybody could do this. And I definitely want to experiment with different colors and see if I can find some different kind of elements, um, something different than roses, but a really easy, cheap, not super time consuming way to jazz up your clothes a little bit. And then I obviously did this cami. <laughs> It's a little bit crooked, but again, I think it turned out pretty cute. It's not super noticeable unless you're like really looking for it, I think. But before this was just, you know, kind of a dingy old lacy tank top. And now that little element just adds a little bit of excitement to the piece, makes it feel new again, and I'm excited to try and style these. Now we'll move on to some of the fails. So I've tried to dye this sweater <laughs> several times, and I think it's like a mix of just polyester and other materials. So I think that's why the dye took to some of it, but not all of it. So I'm wondering if I go and try the like specific synthetic dye. I have seen it at Michael's, but I haven't tried it. I've just tried like the normal one and it hasn't worked. It's worked a little bit where it will like tinge the clothing, but it's not fully dyeing it. So maybe if the synthetic dye works, I'll give it one more go <laughs> on these pieces. But if not, they're like kind of destroyed, but that's okay. It's a learning process. So as you can see the color is just kind of strange. <laughs> It's got some weird red spotting on it also, which I don't know where that came from. Yeah, I 
I'm not loving how this looks. So again, we might try one more time to dye that. This one, same thing. Before it was more of a berry, kind of maroonish, purpley color. And it's definitely faded and darker, but it's still giving like absolutely nothing. <laughs> and it just looks like dingy and dirty, you know what I mean? It's not distressed in a cool way, it just looks faded and odd. So that's one I could try the synthetic dye on. This one as well, not too much to say, same thing. Started off brighter, a berry maroon with like pink and orange stripes in it. So it's darkened the piece of clothing, but it's not black. And black was really the only color I could think to go with with that color palette. I wasn't sure how the other colors would mix on top. So that's why I went with black, but clearly didn't work super well. This skirt also was so surprising that it still didn't dye completely black because this skirt was white to start. So it should have been the easiest piece of all of them. But again, it's still gray. It does kind of look black on camera, but in person, it's kind of like a charcoal. It's pretty close to my sweatpants that you can see. This is wearable. And I could try to dye it one more time with the synthetic dye, or I could, I don't know, just go crazy on it. Um, maybe draw with some bleach pens or something like that, or just paint it. But since these clothing pieces are fucked, <laughs> I'm kind of open to suggestions and uh, what I could do to rework them and figure out what to do with them. This top, unfortunately the same thing. It took some of the dye, but not really. And it's just a horrible mishmash of colors. Um, truly unwearable. <laughs> But maybe the synthetic dye would work for that. So there's our fails for the day. So the black batch of dye uh, pretty much went terribly. <laughs> and the white top was from the green batch. But the remainder of that batch actually did turn out pretty good. So first we have this t-shirt. It is a little spotty, but I don't mind it too much. I got the idea to draw on this with bleach pens and I'm not sure how it will work. So I might have to try a spot and see. If not, I might just hand paint it. But my mind is definitely on spring and I've been obsessed with the imagery of clovers and things like that. And St. Patrick's Day is coming up, so that could be affecting my brain too. But I think it would just be really cute to do a very freehand watercolor type of art style and just draw some plants and things on it. So so I might do that. I'm still thinking about it. But this one turned out decent. This one, I think the color is so pretty and interesting. It's definitely different than anything I own. And I'm not sure if I'm going to change out the buttons or do some kind of embellishment yet. But it definitely has potential. I don't know how well you can see, but all the blue stitching is still blue. And it's really contrasting with the green. And it's pretty cool. There's like pops of sky blue throughout the green. So I could incorporate that into some of the embellishments. But I've yet to try all this on. So some of these pieces I might keep as is. I'm not sure yet. This one, again, is pretty spotty. But before it was just a dingy yellow tank top. And now it's a really pretty shade of green. I do think I might paint this one just because it's such a like whatever top you know <laughs> like I think it was five dollars and I've had it for a while so I think I might just see what I can print or paint on this could be like a fun little layering piece or something now this one I think turned out beautiful this was just a plain white button up before but the dye took to it pretty evenly but except where like the panels are thicker the green is like slightly darker and I love the variation in color but it looks intentional this one, I'm not sure if I'm going to do extra things to it. I could see like tulips being painted on this, but I'm not sure how I would go about it. And I'm worried I'll ruin the shirt doing that because I do like this green color. I might decide to live with this for a little bit and see, but this is definitely an improvement from what it was. It was just a plain white shirt, but it did have some of that, you know, just like old yellow spotting that white clothes can get sometimes. And I tried to get that out, but I couldn't. And I've since accumulated quite a few <laughs> white button ups. Having this one just like plain I was like never going to reach for it with the more dramatic ones that I have now. Having a button up this color is such a unique option and I'm really happy with how this one turned out. And now I'm looking at it and I'm realizing there are some spots on it, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, so overall, uh, mistakes were made, <laughs> lessons were learned. I'm fairly happy with some of our results. Hi, welcome to my uh, current chaotic workstation. <laughs> so to be honest with you, I've been doing this video for a while now. It's taken me a little bit longer to finish it than I originally planned. So I'm not sure how many total projects I'm gonna get finished for this particular video, just because I wanna be able to get it out and work on something new. I've already spent enough time on it, you know? Even though I didn't film a whole lot of the process, dyeing the clothing took a very extensive amount of time, like an entire day to do all of that and then get everything washed and dried. And life's just been 
been a little bit hectic, but currently I'm wearing one of my projects and I'm still debating painting flowers on this. I could see some tulips on the back or something like that, but I really like how this color turned out. And today I paired it with this little like vintage Calvin Klein swim skirt, which you can't really tell it's for swimming in person. The colors are so pretty together. I don't want to ruin this piece. This is the best result in my opinion. So I'm really nervous to like take paint to it and not like it because I can't go back once I make that decision. But for now, I'm just enjoying this piece as it is. Uh, but here's an outfit for it. I have been doing an outfit challenge on my Instagram. So if you're interested in following me there, I did post this look that I'm currently wearing. Also, I should have raised my camera higher. I'm like ugh, crouching into the shop. My plan for this shirt I talked a little bit about my like clover fascination right now and I'm just really drawn to all those like normal common little flowers that you would just not look at really typically anyways but because spring is starting to arrive at least where I live I'm noticing new things pop up in the grass little buds here and there on trees really feeling inspired by growth plants and also like lucky charms not the cereal to be clear <laughs> but like lucky charms like clovers horseshoes the number seven i think i want to play off of charms and good luck and concepts like that also while i doodle on this i don't really have a plan in mind i'm just gonna go for it and see what happens i do have this bleach pen i have never used one of these not even for cleaning my clothes so i don't even know how to use this <laughs> but we're gonna figure it out so what i did to start to prepare was I took a canvas board and I stuck it in between the layers of the shirt so that the bleach won't bleed through to the other side because I plan on drawing on this entire top and I don't want the designs to bleed through. Obviously we want a clean design on all sides of the shirt. Sticking something in between, if you're painting a piece of clothing, something like that is always a good idea just because we don't want any transfer. Yeah, so I guess that basically explains what's happening at least right now. I don't really know where I'm gonna end this video, but for now, this is what we're gonna work on and we will regroup once I'm finished. Yeah, so this project was a complete fail. The pen did not work at all. I do think the purpose of this pen is for something else, which I will talk about later, but I did try my best to play around and get the design to work. I even let it outside in the sun to dry, but just nothing changed. It hardened, it got stuck like that. Ultimately, it was just a mess. It didn't work out, unfortunately, so it is what it is. So that bleach is taking a lot longer to dry than I expected. A lot more product came out, and the consistency of it is really weird. It's not how I expected it to be. So I laid it outside in the sun to dry, so hopefully that does something but we'll have to check on it in a little bit. So for now, I'm shifting my focus over here onto this tank top. And what I'm gonna do is just straight up paint on it with acrylic paint, but I also have this textile medium over here. So I'll mix that with paint and hopefully it should hold up. Of course, it's gonna chip and fade away over time, um, but that's to be expected, you know, cause we're painting on clothing. I'm just gonna wing it and see what comes up. Again, I'm going with similar themes. I think this green color is evoking that kind of imagery in my mind. So plants and flowers and stuff like that. But yeah, so we're just gonna experiment and see what happens. So this process definitely worked a lot better. I haven't hand washed the top yet, so I'm really not sure how everything holds up. But I basically took textile medium and just mixed it on my paint tray with all the colors that I wanted to use and began hand mixing my own colors and painting designs. Again, I'm currently feeling very inspired by spring and nature and plants and things like that, so I started painting some hydrangeas and just wanted to get a nice floral thing going on with lots of hearts and little doodles and branches and stuff like that. I really didn't have any kind of plan when I was doing this, I was just feeling it out and each space was kind of speaking to me differently and I was kind of going off the coloring of the shirt just naturally as well because there was some spots and differences and tones and stuff. But I used this star cookie cutter to kind of get the shape of the star going. It didn't work really in printing it but I got the general outline at least so I could kind of keep the lines straight and I think it worked pretty well. I would like to try this again but fill up like a paper plate with paint and try it that way to see if I can use it as a stamp. But don't be afraid to get creative and use, you know, objects around your house to get certain designs and prints on your clothing or your art projects or whatever. You can pretty much use anything as a stamp so I was just winging it just to see what happened and was trying to be creative and organic and feel my way through the process. And I really do love how everything turned out. I just was going in and blending everything as best as I could, trying to get the colors a little bit more saturated, adding little dot details and stuff like that here and there. 
and ultimately I was trying to fill the negative space without overwhelming the design too much by adding little leaves and things like that where I could. It's definitely not perfect, but you know, I gave it my all. I had fun. I didn't put too much pressure on myself and I really like how everything turned out. I think it's really pretty and cute. So I figured we'd check back in, um, discuss my progress so far, some good results, some bad ones, and decide how I'm going to wrap up this video, which projects I'm going to commit to finishing, <laughs> because unfortunately not all of them worked out. And honestly, that was a bigger workload than I was kind of thinking at the time, all for one video. Like I need to get better at setting proper limits for myself and just being like, okay, we're going to focus on three pieces, five pieces. But since I was dyeing everything together, I just wanted to see what would happen and unfortunately it's just like too much work <laughs> for me to handle all this week so some pieces are just gonna go in a bag and storage for now till i figure out how to rework them or what to do with them but for now my plan is to finish one to three pieces and then i'll style a couple looks at the end with everything that i've deemed to be like finished <laughs> but i probably will go back to these pieces and add more eventually but i just want to get what i can done uh so we can finish up this video but to start um here here is the tank top I painted. And yeah, there are some spots there. I'm still not sure what I want to do with that area, but I think the paint turned out really pretty. And here's the back. I didn't show me painting this portion just because the process was similar to the first part. Um, but I just like freehanded everything. Got some angel wings, some hydrangeas, some butterflies, dragonflies, stars. I'm really happy with this and I know it won't hold up forever. I already like the muted kind of quality to it. And this, oh my gosh, this is almost the same color as my sweater. I've got a thing about green for sure. Green is probably my favorite color um, at least right now when the world is cold and dark <laughs> just the closeness and shade to my sweater is making me realize that that dye did do a pretty good job which it was perfect on that button up. but i will definitely keep that shade in mind for the future but to finish up this one i was thinking about doing some kind of ribbon or pin or button on the front i'm really not sure what to do yet so i'm still thinking about it or if i want to do something with the straps and add some ribbons here so you'll have to let me know what you think but for now, I think I might do some kind of bow detail right there, but I'm still thinking about it. For now, I think I just might let that piece be, but I did want to incorporate that ribbon, I think, with this piece. And I've seen on Pinterest these like tie front blouses, and they're so freaking pretty. <laughs> I think about them all the time. And then ever since I saw that, I was like, hey. <laughs> I can do that, <laughs> which what gives me the confidence and authority uh, to say that, the audacity to think that I can just do things <laughs> that I don't know how to do. But yeah, me with like no sewing skills, I'm like, I can do that. But I think what I might try, and I don't know if this is a stupid idea, but I was thinking about just cutting the buttons out since there already is like, you know, proper, like the buttons are stitched on there. I could just like cut a hole and do the ribbon enclosures here or what i was thinking is it might be easier to like glue ribbon on the button and then play around with that and see if we can figure out some kind of ribbon closure but i'm not sure how to approach this so i'm still thinking about it and i am considering painting this piece and doing more embellishments to it but i think the ribbons would look good on this top and that green ribbon i pulled up earlier i think would match really well i could get other colors and think about what i want to do since the stitching in the top is blue that that could look really pretty also. I don't know how I'm gonna go about it yet, but that is what I wanna do to that top. And then <laughs> another fail. There's like some slight fading from the bleach on this shirt, but the design completely washed out and, and it says not to use it on colored items. I'm not trying to like remove a stain. I was trying to lighten the clothing. So I figured it just said that just to warn people like, hey, don't bleach your clothes if you don't want to. So I was actively trying to bleach the shirt. So that's why I purposely went against the directions. But I do think that product is more focused on stains and more specifically for white clothes. I could like try bleach in a cup painting it, but I don't know if I want to do that. Just have like an open container of bleach. So I might paint that one too, since the tank top turned out really well. And since that fabric is smoother, I'm curious about how paint will go onto the shirt. But for now, I want to work on the button up top and think about how I want to go about adding the bows and ribbons or whatever. So let's get started. So I did end up cutting off the buttons and I used a color pencil to widen the hole to get the ribbon through. I had just enough ribbon left of this particular color to finish the shirt, but unfortunately I cut them disproportionately so they are uneven and I do have to play around with it and try to fix that. I'm really hoping I can find a similar ribbon at the craft store 
for but if not this works for the time being and i'm satisfied i think that color combo is so pretty i don't think most people are going to notice that detail and i can rearrange them and try to make it better for now but all in all i'm very happy with how this piece turned out and ready to show you the final styled outfits while this top is certainly a different take than the original inspo photo i got the idea from in the first place i'm really happy with this and i like that it has my own weird personality attached to it i think the color combination is perfect i love it with these pants the way the navy and the blue bounce off each other it's such a cool look it went from being one of the plainest most passable pieces of clothing in my closet to something that's genuinely unique and interesting i feel the same way about this old tank top before it was yellow and just you know kind of of old and tattered and uninteresting and now it's visually got a lot going on the color is beautiful i love the paintings that i did actually and i do think i want to tie in the blue from the hydrangeas in the back onto the front i think that would kind of make everything look a little bit more cohesive but i do think that the vision in my head came across in this piece i think it's really pretty i love the colors i love the painterly illustrative quality of the drawings i did still not sure what to do with that opening section or the spots on the shirt so please let me know what you think i definitely think it needs a little bit something but again i am happy with this piece and i'm happy with these ones as well which we already talked a bit about the little rose details really just adds an extra little pop makes the outfit more interesting and you can really play around with this by doing a red lipstick red tights red accessories whatever you want to do to play off that theme and the colors but overall easy easy upgrade you know there's not much more to say about it it's a very easy do-it-yourself project if you're looking to start small i would highly recommend starting with something like this you can see what i was saying here how the red of the flower ties in with the tights it's just that little pop that draws your eye upward and i think it's so perfect and sweet i really do think that this top needed something in that center and i think this is a perfect balance that's not too obvious so that concludes this video uh very sorry i forgot the green button up <laughs> and also i'm very sorry i didn't film like more of the dyeing process it was kind of a disaster i'm not gonna lie and i did want to warn you all before you click off this video be careful when you're pouring this stuff out it will stay in your tub it will make a horrible disaster of a mess also wear gloves <laughs> but i can't say it was like worth it for the synthetic pieces i do want to try the synthetic dye just to see if it works but after that i think i'm going to give up on those ones but i definitely definitely recommend that green dye at the very least for natural fibers. That was still a mess to clean up, but overall it was much more worth the process than the black dye was. And the black dye was like a just, yeah, I'm not going to show you what my shower looks like right now. And I'm sure there's like other ways you could probably dispose of this stuff, but I'm kind of limited in my options. So that's just what I went with. And honestly, my bathtub is wrecked because I dye my hair anyways. And it's like an old tub. I have to paint over it. So but I digress. Just wanted to give a few tips if you are going to attempt to dye your clothing, prepare for mess and prepare for weird results if you don't know what the materials are in your clothing. Yeah, more natural fibers are definitely going to dye a lot easier. But overall, I'm, you know, happy with how everything turned out. Well, not everything, but some things. Ultimately, I think I have like five new pieces of clothing that I get to wear now that are going to be in my current rotation that were just sitting gathering dust before. So to me, that is a mission accomplished. <laughs> Didn't go exactly as planned, but when does it ever? So I think I did a pretty good job considering I am not a seamstress or a fashion designer by like any stretch of the imagination, but I did have fun and I'm learning. It's always good to try new things. You know, be a little bit bad at something. <laughs> You'll have to let me know which piece is your favorite and let me know if you've had any successful DIYs, if that's something you like to do or something you struggle with. And as always, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you all so much for a thousand subscribers. I can't believe it. Um, that number is really crazy to me, truly. I really appreciate the positivity and everyone has just been so encouraging. If you have any questions about the processes, feel free to ask. Um, I know I didn't include everything. Again, appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you around. Bye.